the rock. The floods came, the rains came, the wind came. Wind comes first. The wind came to test the structure of the house. Winds blew hard against the house, but the uprights were there exactly like they ought to be. Carpenters here could understand this. And it had the framing exactly right. The wind blew, but the house did not move. The framework. It didn't shake the structure of the house. Then the rain came, testing the roof, came to test the outside. How was it covered outside? What kind of plaster boards or what kind of masonry? But the water couldn't come through, testing the the roof and the outside. It was built right. Then the waters began to flow around the house. And it began to wash things away. Perhaps it had been dropped there, laid there. But there's one thing. It didn't move that house. It was sitting on a rock. And after the storm was over, they praised God. They thanked God that they had built up on a rock. And you could see more of the rock than you could before. After you've been through a storm, people can see that you're built upon a rock. How many has been through storms and you're still standing? And then you say, if it had not been for Jesus, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't even be in this work. I wouldn't be saved or cleansed or sanctified or filled with the Spirit. But I built right. I sought God right. You look and see others. They go well. They run well for a little while, Jesus said. Who did hinder you? not what to turn you away from the truth if you are in the truth you will not fall if you'll stay in the truth oh brother Hall I know preachers that have fallen they fell when they begin to glory in themselves but you glory in God. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. He said, every time I do anything, I've got to get a vision. My God or my Father's got to show it to me. Not myself getting something in, and thinking or saying this, God. If we really get something from God, it will not falter. But that that we've got from man will fail. But that that you get from God will never fail. It's forever. I've got my hand in the hand of the man that still the water. I've got my hand in the hand of the man that was nailed to the cross. I've got my hand in the hand of the man that lifted Peter up out of the water. I've got my hand in the hand of the man that stretched forth his hand and said, Peace be still. Peace, peace, be still. Look at this J-E-S-U-S. -S. There was a storm out on Galilee. There was an awful storm on Galilee. 
The winds blew against that little ship. It turned 10 degrees listed, 20 degrees. Waters began to cover, come into it. The wind blew. They, they began to cry to each other, something's got to give. If something doesn't give, this boat's going to sink and we're on it. How many times have you been in the storm? Storm of finance. Storm in your home. Storm with your wife. Storm with your husband. Storm with your children. Storm in the community. Storm. You knew that you had to get help from someone. You went to preachers. And I know us preachers. We give you the right words. Just hold on to God and God will work it out. But we don't work it out. Then you'll come to the conclusion, I've gone to Brother Hall. I've gone to these different preachers, Kenneth Copeland, Ken Hagen. I've gone to all of them. Margie Mint, Michael Shreve, Mike Free. And they, they love me. They've done what they can. But I've got to get to Jesus. If you don't mind, please, take me to Jesus. Raise your hand and say, take me to Jesus. I'll be all right if you'll take, whoo, if you'll take me to Jesus. Don't mind to come by the way of the apostles. I don't mind to come by the way of the prophets. But I'm not satisfied with just coming to the prophets. If you don't mind, please, let me get to Jesus. That boat was filled with apostles and prophets. I hope somebody hears that. And the ship was sinking with them. That ship was filled with disciples and prophets. None greater. The greatest prophets of all time was on that ship. You've got records of them in your Bible. You wouldn't even have the New Testament if it were not for, uh, parts of it were not for them. Can't say they wasn't all right, but they were in trouble. Say amen. Boat was sinking. They'd taken their vessels, thrown the water, did everything they could. How many here have taken your vessels? I'll get, I'll get the lawyer. Maybe he can help me. Maybe perhaps the physician. I'll go to the psychiatrist. I'll go to a preacher. Then after a while, you'll say, I've got to get a greater power than this. I've got to go to Jesus. I thank God for all these others. But if you don't mind, please let me take to the master, take me to the master of the sea. I mean, there's great men. I've been out on ships. I've been on 23 ships in my time. On USS America, I've been on Queen Mary. I've been on numbers of the present line. I was on the Hornet. On different ships. And there were masters that were going to take control of those ships and did take control the masters of the ship in fact michael shreve's dad father was a master of a ship he was in control of the ship mike shreve his father they were masters but here were some masters on a, a ship that was going down peter james john and others and still the ship was going down and they had to call on the master of the sea the ship 
itself was all right, but the storm was on. I dare you to raise your hand and say, my ship's all right, but there's a storm buffets me. That ship was all right. It was built well, but the storm was too great for the little ship. After a while, one said, the master, I want you to hear that. Everybody say master. They said, the master's on board. God, I wish I might hear that. What's the matter with us? The master's back there. And he's not even weary. He's not afraid. He's sleeping through it all. The master's on board. They go back, listen to what they say. They get him up and he comes sloshing through the water. The storm is still on. Jesus is with you, but you still have a storm, don't you? How many's got Jesus with you? And how many of you still know you have storms? Well, call on him. Jesus was on that ship, but they were in a storm. And they were in the storm till they called on him. Ask, you shall receive. You receive not because you ask amiss. You, you ask the wrong one. You go to some preacher. So, well, my Lord, Brother Hall, you're killing your ministry. If my ministry is not the ministry of Jesus Christ, it needs to die. If you love Jesus, raise your hands and praise God. Jesus came to the forepart, and, and they, they wanted to touch him, you know. They really wanted. <laughs> you know, we come to Jesus, and he knows the heart. Lord, how, oh, how I love you. He knows. You might put that over with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, somebody, but and they make them believe it, but Jesus knows. Raise your hand and say, He knows. Jesus knows. Say amen. And they, they said, Master, carest thou not if we perish? And I heard a preacher not long ago preach a whole sermon that they didn't have any faith. That wasn't, Jesus didn't reprimand them for because they didn't have any faith concerning that storm. I've never seen a crowd so quiet. Master, carest thou not if we perish? And what a question to ask him. You know good and well he'd care. And you know why he, what he said this for? Oh, ye of little faith. Or don't you believe in me any more than that? We, all, we always think he's talking about you didn't have faith to stop this storm. Listen, folk, there's a lot of times you don't have faith to stop the storm, but call on the master. Oh, ye of little faith. You say, I don't have the faith. It won't come to pass. Well, call on Jesus. And he said to them, he reprimanded them because they asked him such questions. Master, carest thou not if we perish? He said, oh, ye of little faith. He was really saying, you know I care for you. Stepped out to the fore part of that ship, nothing happened. Sloshed through the water and nothing happened. Looked out across the ocean and nothing happened, the sea. Stretched forth his hand and nothing happened. But the voice that had created it came forth. Peace. Lord, I love to hear it. Be still. And the winds obeyed his mighty will, and the waters deep and wide did what? Heard him when he cried. That was the voice that had made them. 
peace. I left out. We're going to do it. Oh, peace. Be still. Raise your hands toward him. Hum the song or sing it if you will. Just let an utterance come out of your mouth. You're not going to move back demons and devils and powers until you speak to them. Power against the demons and power against the satanic forces is in your voice. Sing it with me. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. On the winds, hold me. And the waters deep and wide heard him when he cried. Did the waters obey him? I'm asking you a question. Did the waters obey him? Did the winds obey him? There's a calm on the sea, and the waters went to sleep. There's no big waves there, and the wind went to hide. I dare you to stand on your feet. I challenge you to, in total faith, Turn round and round, pay nobody any mind. Take that hand and go round and round and watch God start moving your life and sing it. Peace. Watch God to supply your finances. Watch Him do it. Peace to you. Peace. Watch God heal. Peace to you. And the wind. Waters deep and wide heard him when he cried. Peace, glory to God. Oh. somewhere you've got somebody sick somewhere you've got somebody in difficulty somewhere you've got some battle in another state in another city or even right here I dare you I dare you to say my faith that God's given me he didn't give me a faith it was no good he gave me some good faith every person here every man woman boy and girl if you've got faith God gave it to you God, does God have any junk faith? Any secondhand faith? Well, I dare you to raise your hand and say, God gave me work in faith that'll move mountains. I challenge you, all friend, I challenge you. I can preach Pentecostal and walk the back of the benches. But listen, if you don't use what you've got, you don't deserve any more. I challenge you, bless God, I dare you to do it. I challenge you to turn and say, God, turn round and round, pay nobody any mind. God's going to move for my son Jim or whatever his name is. If he's in another state, God's going to save my husband. God's going to move on my mother. God's going to heal my little girl down yonder in Alabama or Mississippi or somewhere. God is going to move on my son and get that depressed spirit out of him. God's going to, Messiah, God's going to move on my daughter. God is going to make things right. I dare you to do it. 
Use that faith now. Why ask somebody else to use yours? Theirs, if you won't use use yours. I dare you to cry. I dare you to cry to the top of your voice. I dare you to cry. If you're ashamed of him, he said, I'll be ashamed of you. Praise God. God is going to move in my life. God is going to shake the ministry. God is going to shake the ministry like he never has shaken it. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. You may be seated. Don't tell me to be quiet. Somebody said, Brother Hall, be quiet. I will not be quiet. I certainly will not. Come, come, Margie. Come on, son, right quick. Come, little girl, hurry. Stand here with Margie as quick as you can. Watch this. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. He was riding on the foal of an ass of the mule family. He didn't even have a Mercedes or a Buick or a Chevrolet. He didn't even have a Jeep. He entered and passed through Jericho. Riding on a mule. Everybody say riding on a mule. And while he was riding, there was people along that way that were unbelievers, but there were some believers. There's always more unbelievers than there are believers. And as Jesus passed by, riding that mule, going through the city, sitting upright, folk began to come to him. One came to him. Two more came to him. They got close to that. They got close to that. Got real close to that mule. Say amen. And they were going along with him. I can see them. One fellow looked. Nice looking, handsome looking fellow. Two beautiful women. And folk called him offside because they were giving glory to Jesus on that mule. Say amen. They were magnifying the Lord. And as the Lord went along, they were going along with the mule. They wouldn't stop. After a while, somebody called him to the side and said, Hey, you look like intelligent people. Why are you going along with this man on the mule? Quit making a fool out of yourself. Can't you see it? That's what people say about us. And it's in my mind, in my own mind, this could have well happened. You're making a fool out of yourself. You're a nice looking man. I can hear him say, you don't know me. I was lying dead in a tomb. These are my sisters, Martha and Mary. And I was lying there in that tomb. And I heard a voice saying, Lazarus, come forth. He raised me from the dead and I will not hold my peace. I will cry aloud and spare not. Where did God bring you from? I dare to raise your hand and say, he brought me from the pits. I'll not hold my peace. Bless you, angel. Praise him, my higher. Say amen, folk. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. See another big husky man. Come, fella. See him going along, right along with Jesus. Just as close as he could get to him. Put his hand over on the mule where Jesus rode. I'd like to have that mule Jesus rode, wouldn't you? You can have your little doggies, but I'd like to have that little muley. If you love Jesus, raise your hands and praise God. You can have cats and birds and everything else, but wouldn't you like to have that mule? Oh, you can't do it, but wouldn't you? And here this fellow was real close to Jesus and had his arm around him as he was riding that mule. Fine looking fellow. I can see them calling him off to the side, say, fellow, what's the matter with you? Hey, you're a nice looking fellow, intelligent looking man. Why are you going along with this man on the mule? What is it that, that's attracted you? He said, if you just knew who I am. He said, I was over in the tombs and I was waiting for dead bodies, reaching down when they'd bury a dead person. And I'd get hold of their body and jerk off an arm and eat the flesh, dead flesh, tear into them and chew because I was, I was possessed 
with over 2,000 raging demons. And this man on the mule came and set me free. I'll not hold my peace. I'll cry aloud. How many here can raise your hand and say he set me free from demons? How many can do really? He did you, did you? Yes, sir, he did. He set me. Are you going to hold your peace? No way in the world. If you love him, raise your hands and praise God. My Lord and my God, don't tell me to be quiet. I wonder how many, how many will say, don't tell me to be quiet. Well, jump to your feet and say, I was bound by demons of drugs. Look at all over this congregation. How many will jump to your feet? You remain standing. Jump to your feet and say, I was bound by alcohol. Look at the folk there, folk. Don't tell me to be quiet or cursing demons or adultery spirits or satanic forces. How many has ever been set free from, from powers of hell? Jump to your feet and say, he sent me free. I've been delivered. How many has ever had your mind almost a snap and Satan coming against you trying to take your mind? Give you an old insane spirit and the good Lord came by and set you free. Don't tell me to be quiet. I will not be quiet. Hallelujah. I will not hold my peace. Hallelujah. I dare. I challenge some of you. I dare you. I dare you. Praise God to run by this microphone. You can start it. What did? And tell them God set me free from what? God set me free from drugs and alcoholism. Demons? Demons and devils. Anybody else here? God set me free from narcotic drugs and I will not hold my peace. God set me free from drugs and demons and alcohol and I will not hold my peace. God set me free from suicide and depression and I will not hold my peace. I will not hold my peace. I feel dark. God set me free from drugs and alcohol and uh, sexual immorality and I will not hold my peace. I will not hold my peace. What an honest man. Why don't somebody give the Lord a cheer? <laughs> Nobody else. No one else here really cares. He said you be a witness unto me. This should be a witness. God set me free from drugs, alcohol, uh, and the spirit of making money and all kinds of demonic what spirits. Kind of Cocaine, uh, methamphetamines, uh, uh, barbiturates, anything I could get. How long did it take you? A second. Set you free. Jesus set me free from drugs and alcohol, filth and corruption, and I will not hold my peace. Will not hold my peace. He delivered me of alcohol and suicide, and I'll not hold my peace. Oh, no, you won't, will you, little wren? Set me free from demonic powers of hell, set me free from death and cancer, and I will not hold Set me free from a demon of cancer. Who else? Anybody else? The Lord Jesus Christ set me free from a life of drugs and alcohol. I'll tell you, I'd witness. I never was on drugs and I never was on alcohol. I never smoked a cigarette. I never even taste, tasted tobacco. Never did taste whiskey, beer, or wine. Never did. And look how I'm happy. And shout. I've never been to a moving picture show in my life. I've never been even to a circus in my whole life. And yet I'm up here praising God. And some of you people have been almost in hell with your feet going down. And the Lord reached down when he reached down his hand for me. Woo! Lord God, if I were you, I know what I'd be doing. I'm a church at Hall. I'd be shouting to high heaven, look what the Lord's done for me. 